Day one here at Farnborough International Air Show and another big announcement, this time coming from Raytheon UK. And to tell us all about it, I've got their managing director, James Gray. Now, it's great to see you here and it was a fantastic announcement. I heard it, but tell us all. Brilliant, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'm here, I look after the cyberspace and training business and we're here announcing our agreement to acquire Norse, Northern Space and Security, a business really focused around orbital analysis in the space domain awareness sector. Which to an outsider might seem like a, a completely uh, sort of, I suppose, outlandish idea. I mean, what is, what is the essence of it? Actually, Northern Space and Security's technologies are really complementary with our own. And so as space gets more congested and more relied upon, uh, understanding where those assets sit is becoming more and more relevant and more and more important. And together, our intention is to be able to provide more of that information more quickly uh, to our customers. So you've identified Norse as, as a company that, you, that appeals to you to work alongside as a partnership and to sort of oversee as well. But what made you come up to the, the idea that Norse was the company for you? So Raytheon may not be well known for this, but we work with many SMEs across all of our businesses. And in fact, we have over 30 that work with us day in, day out. And so we constantly horizon scan uh, the uh, SMEs and uh, other organizations across the UK for technologies that might be synergistic with our own. And in this case, we felt this one here fitted perfectly. And of course, when we bring the word northern in there, this is all about levelling up, isn't it? And making sure the UK is one cohesive unit. Yes, you're right, Bryn. But actually already, 98% of the work that Rayton does in the UK is outside of London. But this intensifies our um, push to the north. We opened in Manchester in 2016 uh, for our cyber division. And this puts our space division next to um, those connected uh, and really critical aspects of the future for space. So talk to me a little bit about the, the staff and future-proofing the workforce because I think when we talk about space, we always think we have to have the youngest minds out there and the, the, sort of the, the, the strongest minds in the industry. How do you go about recruiting these people and what do you think is going to be the future when it comes to recruitment and opportunities? Well, let me first of all say that I'm delighted to welcome the Norse team to our own organisation. I think they're going to really enjoy working with us. Um, but you're right, uh, access to uh, resources is one of, is one of our... Um, key challenges. And I think that we have to continually make the case uh, for the services, the importance of the capabilities that we provide, and, and how our customers have come to rely upon the work that we do. And that really gets people um, enthused and optimistic about working with Raytheon, and so we'll carry on doing that uh, to attract people to our business. Which is, a, which is fantastic really, but it also means, I suppose, when you're working with other companies and you're all coming together as a collaboration, it means they are more appealing to a stronger workforce as well. That's the great thing, I think, about the partnerships that we create in Raytheon UK. It's about bringing those technologies from different areas and making them work together, and the sum of their parts become greater as a result, and our customers benefit from those partnerships. So if you could look into your crystal ball then and give us an idea of what this, this area above us is going to look like in the next you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, give us a picture. Well, I think a couple of things that I'd uh, bring forward there. The first thing is to be able to sense what's going on up there. Right? If, you, if, if you don't have the situational awareness, then you can't go through to the next phase, which is about connecting, right? making sure that the information is disseminated in a way that is understood. And the second part of that is about making sense. How do we make sense of the data that we have? The more devices we have, the better they are connected, the more data we get, and we have to make sense of those right, through analytics, uh, machine learning, uh, and then latterly, um, artificial intelligence. And finally, we have to help our customers make decisions from that data. So this is the first part of that sense piece, understanding what's out there and making it work with that future dissemination. I suppose as the world relies more and more on, on the, the digitalization of everything, it's a very crucial area. James, it's, it's a real pleasure. And it's, it's also a really exciting time, isn't it? Really exciting. Absolutely delighted to have Norse as part of our organisation. We're going to grow together uh, and set out a really good business. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.